here since day one. I'm Coach Mia. And I'm Coach Dawn. Welcome to Glow 365 Show. It's June and we celebrate Caribbean American Heritage Month this month every year. Also in June, we raise awareness about International Men's Health Month, which today's show is entitled Men's Health Finding Balance Within the Mind, Body and Soul. In it, we examine the five biggest killers of men, the so-called disease of civilization, heart disease, stroke, suicide, and prostate and lung cancer. Coach Mia, the question is, what can we do to prevent this decimation of the beloved men of our community? Can preventative screening help? If so, at what age? What about holistic wellness lifestyle changes? Are there nutritional dietary factors that can help? Does mental wellness play a part? And what about spiritual self-care and other factors? Coach Dawn, later in the show, two of our guests will reveal the answers to those questions. Now, before we dive into the specifics of today's show, I'd like to bring attention back to Caribbean American Heritage Month, which is celebrated in uh, each year in June. Coach Dawn, what does it, that mean to you in terms of your Jamaican culture and not just because we celebrate it in June, but all year long? It's very significant to me because I think that when you, uh, when you emigrate here from another country, um, especially uh, being uh, an immigrant of, you know, African extraction. It's kind of like, in a way, you're kind of coming from another planet. So, um, and since we spend all year, you know, sharing um, the other communities that we live with, including the African-American community, um, we, uh, we have the pleasure of sharing our culture with the world. As a Jamaican, that makes me feel so proud, our food, our music, and then we hope, of course, that it will carry over to the rest of the year as well. I definitely agree. You know, um, for me, you know, Dawn, um, as a born Jamaican and also being of mixed culture, um, not just, you know, the importance of celebrating it just one day a month, but all year long, but also to, you know, for me, it's educating me, you know, so that I can immerse myself into other cultures um, beyond my own and also learn, you know, cultural traditions, um, cuisines, you know, the history of the people and what struggle, you know, they've done, you know, within the community. And also my culture doesn't really define who I am, but it helps me on how I can inspire, educate and interact with those within my community and not criticize them because I don't understand their culture, but embrace the knowledge I gain, share it within my business and also you, the viewers. My mother always says the knowledge is power. So as a, I'm a woman of culture, 365, I eat it, I breathe it. My culture is in within me every single day. Now, um, let's take a quick break. And when we return, Coach Dawn will chat with Josan on holistic wellness, its benefits to men's health. Stay tuned, stay locked, and we'll be back in 60 seconds.
The Jamaican American Association of Central Florida proudly presents Jamaica's 60th Independent Scholarship and Deputants Award Gala on August 6, 2022 at the Rosen Plaza Hotel from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. Guest speaker will be Dr. Dwayne Dice, CEO of Education Solution International. Co-MCs are Mr. Lewis Witcher and Miss Adriana Clark of Caribbean Rhythms Radio. Dinner served at 7.30 p.m. Music and dancing by DJ Charlie Brown and Caribbean Groove Band. Tickets are $75 by calling 407-467-1741 or 321-439-2130 and also 407-292-3719. Join us for a night of excellence and elegance as we celebrate Jamaica's Diamond Jubilee. For more information, please visit online at www.jaaocf.com. Welcome back. Our first guest today is my friend, Josh Sun, who is a born Jamaican, the minister, a minister of holistic health and wellness, health practitioner, and founder of Third Eye Visions Unlimited. Jason, welcome to Glow 365. Thank you. Uh, blessed. Thank you for having me here. Uh, peace, love, and light to all you wonderful audience. It's a great opportunity to share and learn. Thank you. So, um, Jason. It's so nice to have you on the show. Please share with us the reasons you decided to explore holistic health ideology. Great, wonderful. Uh, as growing as one who grew up in the Caribbean, uh, in Jamaica and other areas of the Caribbean, even in uh, as far as Canada, my family are indigenous people that lived on the land. Uh, we we're like a fifth or sixth generation farmers from what my research had shown so far. And they always had a direct connection with nature. So from growing up, from birth, just seeing it around me, experiencing it, living it. It was uh, uh, basically the very fiber and being of my upbringing to be in, uh, basically in alignment with spirit, with uh, mentality, with environmental you know, responsibility and living directly with nature. Beautiful. Um, so clearly your Jamaican roots have influenced your decision to follow this natural health path. Um, can you explain how? Sure. Uh, when we grew up, the, my family, everything came from the land. So all of your food, almost all your natural um, resources, the things you used, not from just building homes, but uh, the food we grew, the, the clothing we wore, everything. Uh, you know, we grew up washing clothes in the river, drinking rainwater, uh, living off the grid, as we would say. Uh, for seven years of my life, from seven to 14, living without no electricity, no running water, we had the cleanest latrine in town. <laughs> you know, for those, those who don't know how to polish the floor with a dried coconut husk brush, uh, you know, and, and martyring your own coffee and cocoa, uh, all natural, and uh, just hanging everything on the line, raising all our own animals, as well as our crops. So uh, we recycled everything. We, we, we are the original green movement. Everything was tied back to our indigenous ways. Uh, hand-me-downs and wrapping books with paper and everything was passed down, including the nappies to the next pregnant woman in the family. So this this, this green movement really uh, was the, already existing in the green hills and the green bush of Westmoreland, uh, where I grew up in the hills of, you know, Montego Bay and St. James. Beautiful. Um, so can you explain the uh, meaning of Third Eye Visions Unlimited? Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, one of the things I learned as a young child growing up is that I was able to see things with a different eye. Things appeared to me differently, and I, I had to figure out how to share that gift with the world. And I realized basically what they later call the first eye or the third eye was wide open as a child. So I would see things and experience what some people would consider a paranormal activity, or I would see words differently. I, I would joke around that I'm a tri trilexic, not just dyslexic. I would see words. Sometimes I read them from back to front, from front to back, from inside to out. And, uh, and as a you know, result of that, I would share this information with others around me. 
and he would help them open up that inner eye, the third eye, eye that looks within, the eye that gives you in sight, not out of sight. And that is referred to as third eye. So I took that activity, that action word, and I connected it to the fact that we're all connected to an unlimited source. And that unlimited source has a way of connecting us, uh, what I would call the God net. You know, before the internet, there was already a God net. And uh, this is the connectivity that allows you to, as they say, have your ears ringing when somebody talks about you. Mm-hmm. No matter where you are, that's that God net. The call is already coming in. You don't need a cell phone to know someone's phone in you. So I use that word as a phonetic spirit to come up with the ministry under Third Eye Visions Unlimited. So we help you to open up your third eye so you can see the unlimited vision of yourself. Beautiful. Um, can you give us an idea like, of some of the things that some of the services you offer through Third Eye Unlimited? Sure. Uh, we offer holistic health and wellness services that cover both from consultations, because most people uh, need to start with information, the right information, uh, so they can get information. <laughs> and and the, without the right information, you will not get into the right information. And that's usually starting off with the consultation for both men and women individuals, as well as pregnant couples or couples trying to get pregnant. We deal with the whole gamut from children to adults, uh, whether they're having uh, they're trying to get off their quote unquote medication. Uh, we have a lot of clients who are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Uh, so they're ready to make changes now. They've already been to all the doctors. They've, you know, they've been on many doctors. They're tired of the touring now. They're, they'd like to just rest and be healthy. And they've already been through a lot of surgeries and uh, the pain and suffering and, and a lot of cases, lots of lost income. So they would like to learn how to do things the holistic way. And we operate from the mental, the spiritual, the physical. So we remind our clients that, you know, health and wellness is your birthright. The herbs are for the healing of the nation. So we call all prodigal sons and daughters to come on home and claim their birthright. This is holistic health and wellness. And that is a foundational principle of our ministry. And through that, we offer consultations, herbal services, energetic services, and a variety of products to help you heal dietary regimenting, uh, you know, other uh, energy work like that to help the client heal. That is wonderful. Um, so I was reading recently that prostate cancer presents a significant burden to men in the Caribbean. Have you ever had a client seek you out um, to help for your help um, for prostate cancer? And if so, what are your thoughts about approaching prostate cancer from a conventional medicine versus a holistic alternative point of view? Okay, great question. The first thing I would do is, uh, I know this is the verbiage that they use, the Namibian phonetic spirit, one of my positions on the planet is to help put things back in the proper context. So when they say traditional medicine, traditional medicine is what indigenous and traditional peoples practice and live, which is using food as your medicine and medicine as your food. So in reality, the alternative medicine is what they've been promoting in the last hundred years with a lot of plastic, uh, plastic and chemicals and a lot of injections and, uh, you know, so forth. So the traditional way to deal with it is change the diet. I've had many clients, many clients over the years with a variety of prostate issues from prostatitis, prostate cancer, uh, you know, all kinds of lumps and limps and various uh, problems, urinary issues, uh, erectile dysfunction, you name it, all of the the subsets that you get. Uh, Mm -hmm. And we've used natural food, dietary changes, educational changes, chemical changes, the chemicals they're putting in their body, as well as our natural herbal suticles to help relieve them of that issue so the body can start healing. We teach them the dietary composition of what they need to eat. For men, our mineral that, uh, that we need is zinc, for example. So zinc is to men what iron is to women. Women know that you are the real iron man. Did you know that? (laughs) <laughs> that's why that's why Iron Man has on a red suit, because the element iron uh, shows up in red. Have you ever seen a lot of red dirt? It's very rich in iron. And uh, mm-hmm. iron is in your blood, your red blood, which is why it takes oxygen to the brain. So for the women to stay strong, they need iron. For men to stay shine, so we don't get rusty, we need zinc. That's why zinc is used to prevent rust. Okay. Wow. So, so the mineral for men is zinc. Uh, so you get a lot of zinc-rich foods, magnesium, so forth, um, you know, raw pumpkin seeds, uh, Brussels sprouts, uh, other issues that have a lot of zinc. 
Zinc is what your uh, sperm cells swim in. That seminal spinal fluid is full of zinc. Okay? So we also teach men about the purpose of uh, the, the reasons and the health reasons behind uh, basically semen retention also and how that helps with youth and health and vitality. Okay? So this is why they tell boxers and people who are about to compete in high stress activity not to engage in any sexual activity before a boxing match. You can't have, you know, be with anyone for a month. You guys, people like Mike Tyson and those guys, they couldn't, they could, they have to abstain for at least a month or two before any major event to guarantee they were most potent and vigorous. So there's a connection. So we use all of that information. That's what we mean by holistic, W-H-O-L-E, to show you that you're whole, not just a bore hole yeah. in what we're teaching. Yes, yes, perfect. Um, so, um, can you, in your opinion, rather, how does the environment as ex, how does the environment affect our health? Very, very key question. Uh, the environment you're in determines everything about you. You have, I'm sure we're familiar with the saying that a fish can only be as big as, as the container you put it in. Mm. So just like a fish can only grow to a certain length based on the size of the tank as well as the food, the amount of sunlight, the bacterial level that's in that water. Well, so too are we in this tank we call planet Earth, okay? And so we're swimming around in air out here, which is a light liquid. Uh, and it's so everything you're exposed to, not just what you eat, not just what you read, not just what you listen to, the physical energy you bathe in, the people you engage with, uh, so the energy you have around you, the music you listen to, the books you read, the diet you're consuming, the chemicals you're pumping in your veins, the type of air you breathe inside your home. One of our uh, our special offerings at our website is called a home energy cleanse or a home cleanse. And what we found over the years is that a lot of people living in a toxic home, their home is making them sick or their job is making them sick and they're not aware. Some people are having black lung disease. They're catching black mold from the offices they're working in. They've never cleaned the vents for 30 years. They're going in an office building every day breathing moldy air. and So your environment is very crucial. Very crucial, not only where you work, where you play, where you relax. I absolutely agree. Um, can, you, um, can you share some specific health regimen tips that would be beneficial to men? Oh, sure. Be, be glad to. Uh, for most men, for example, we need to have a diet with the right minerals that helps to boost our testosterone. OK, this usually drops off after 40 for most men. Uh, so, but nowadays with the diet that the young people are having, they're having problems as early as 30 years. You know, what never used to affect men till 60 are now having 30 year olds. So diet is even more crucial today. Why? Because most people are not actively engaged outside with a lot of fresh air, lots of sunshine. Vitamin D is crucial also to your health and your happiness and your potency. And because most people work indoors now, they're happy to say they're in an air conditioned building all day long. And they usually only get off work when the sun is going down, so they get way less sun. So you have to make a concerted effort to get exercise, vigorous exercise, because you're not plowing the land and moving the goats and the cows. You know, I know what it's like to have to have a cow drag me around and rip my hands open with rope. <laughs> and you move animals every day. You don't need to go to the gym. Right. Okay, that's that's a workout. So because we're not doing those kind of work working uh, environment anymore, exercise, diet, lots of sunshine. Uh, and also time to work on your skills, advance yourself, and also, you know, to make sure that you are in good health and flexibility. Uh, most men today are very stiff. They need to have some type of yoga, qigong, some type of stretching routine every morning. And, and write out your day. Have a planner and set yourself with a man that's on purpose. Uh, there's a quote that I love, and it says, uh, it goes something like this. Be the kind of man that when your feet hit the floor in the morning, the devil says, oh, he's up. <laughs> okay that's the kind of man you want to hit the ground every day and the devil says oh he's up that's you're about crazy. to take care of business that's right have a plan execute that plan as much as you can every day beautiful um so in closing uh what are your thoughts on um caribbean heritage month oh wonderful uh caribbean heritage is not only part of my indigenous background uh, being uh, one from the, as we say, from the Americas, Caribbean being a part of the Americas, right? The adjoining islands being one from uh, the Maroons and the 
Arawak and all of the people I have in my family background. But the Caribbean, that little island of mine, as they say, I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> Uh, that little island of mine might be the biggest little island in the Western Hemisphere uh, and in some cases influence the entire world uh, because the, the, the roots run deep. Uh, you know, the cliffs are steep, as we say, and uh, everything that comes from there is not cheap. We have the best coffee in the world, the blue label, everything. You know, whatever we have is going to be the blue label or get the blue ribbon. Uh, reggae music. Uh, the genre that's been uh, created, Rastafarianism, as they call it, one of the latest religions or, uh, you know, religious practices created on the planet, all hail from there. Uh, we have the fastest switching muscle fibers of anybody on the planet, uh, okay, uh, from all the, the Olympic, the 100 meter winners from our planet, from our island. And so it's very crucial. Uh, we, you know, a, a little boy at 14 from there landed in the Bronx, created hip hop with turntables from Jamaica. Uh, Harry Belafonte is the reason I think they have a Grammy Award. Uh, so there's a lot of firsts from people from that island. And uh, that's one of the reasons we should make sure we conduct ourselves in a manner befitting of those who came before us to continue that heritage onward. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, so um, any takeaways um, that you would like to share from from this segment and also um, some contact information for our viewers? Wonderful. Thank you. First, I want to say thanks again for having me on to share in not only Caribbean Heritage Month, but uh, Men's Health Month. Uh, the men, uh, it's important men, if you're listening to my voice anywhere in the past, present, or the future. We have to get it together. Uh, men are... <laughs> Uh, uh, we're under attack in many areas, and so the least, last thing we need to be doing is attacking ourselves. Okay, what you put in this hole will determine whether or not you're broken or whole. Okay, let it start there. Like they say, let, let there be peace on earth, let it begin with me. So let there be health and wellness in your life and in your family, and let it begin with you. Why should it begin with you? Because in reality, for you to be a true leader of your home, your family, and your community, you have to start with yourself. And so, you know, we need to make sure we take accountability of what we're eating. For us to be warriors and protectors and providers of our families, health is crucial. I mean, a sick man can't provide a whole lot unless he has a good will and a lot of uh, money in the bank he's going to leave after he passes, you know, a life insurance policy, which is things that you should have. But more importantly, you should try to make sure you live as long as you can, to, you know, be there to protect, provide, cheer with your family. So that's the key takeaway. Uh, Make sure you're looking at your health and wellness. If you're not sure, log on to Third Eye Visions Unlimited and make sure you get a consultation so we can get you on the right track and get a plan in place for you to start taking back your health, your wellness, and your vitality so you can be more of a man, to not only yourself, but to your entire family and community. Awesome. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, my brother. You're welcome. Thank you for having me and peace, love, and light to you and your wonderful audience. Thank you. Okay. Let's take a quick break. And when we return, um, Dr. Ronald Lynch talks about the five main killers of men in the US. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Hello and welcome. My name is Ronnie Walker. Allow me to introduce you to the Mr. Relationship Man Cave.com website. Listen, gentlemen, today is not the day to show up halfway for yourself and for the woman you aim to please. Nutrition and mental health are important to fully experience a healthy and exceptional relationship. As a man, we want to make sure we have what is needed to start and finish strong. So go to www.mrrelationshipmancave.com and explore the possibilities.
Welcome back. Today, my um, second guest is a dear friend and no stranger to Glow Show, Dr. Ronald Lynch. He studied biology and chemistry at Oakwood University in Alabama, has a master's degree in psychology, psych oh, got tongue tied today, physiology at Howard University. He studied at the University of Maryland in Baltimore. He received an MD at the University of Maryland, retired from a family practice um, at his residency in um, Florida Hospital. And he is KO Magazine's uh, GLOW 365 health and wellness journalist, along with medical advisor for GLOW 365 TV show. Dr. Lynch, welcome back to GLOW. You're Sorry, welcome. You're welcome. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. I am so inspired from uh, the last guest, uh, Jason did such a fabulous job. I'm just excited to be a part of your program this evening. Thank you. And we're honored to have you here back again. Um, it's obviously important. Um, it is to have balance within, you know, the body, the mind, the soul and overall wellness. Research have shown that 60% of men do not visit the doctor routinely. Undoubtedly, this fact is related to the five biggest killers of men. That is the heart disease, stroke, suicide, prostate, and lung cancer. Dr. Lynch, would annual health screening help? And if so, what age should men begin? Well, that's such a great question. And I would just give a word about balance. Uh, often we emphasize diet and exercise as, uh, as very important, and they are. But I want to emphasize how mental health, spiritual health, uh, really adds a, a new dimension. And, and that dimension is giving us a sense of purpose. And so without that sense of purpose, we don't have that full gamut of, of health. So we want our mind, our body, our spirit, our social environment, and also the outside environment to be copacetic. And we need some kind of principles to, 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 to go by, the principle of eating right, of exercise, of your water consumption, getting proper sunlight, temperance, which means having good choices, breathing properly, getting rest, and, and a trust uh, uh, factor in God is going to make things that much easier. So if parents get their young men off to a good start, I would say that we could begin screening. You know, obviously, children will go to their pediatrician, but I'd say at, at 20, men need to be a bit more focused on getting regular physical exams. They would learn something about testicular cancer and, and how to do those, those types of examinations. During the, uh, the 30s, things may get a little bit more involved where you may want to now start getting testing for STDs, particularly if there's sexual activity going on. There may be need to get an EKG to check for certain heart abnormalities. There are things that we can do preventively. How would you know that you don't have a abdominal aneurysm, for example, something that, that could cause you to bleed out because of, because of undetected high blood pressure? So those are the kinds of uh, reasons why we want to screen. We don't wanna wait, wait for things to happen. We want to attack. When men are in their 40s, they're still getting a regular physical exam during, during the course of the day. They're getting their blood pressures checked, maybe um, urine tests, certain blood, blood tests such as cholesterol or homocysteine. I used to test vitamin levels and mineral levels to find out who was deficient. The EKG comes in again. And now in the 40s, we're starting to look at the prostate. So we're doing PSA uh, evaluations. That prostate-specific antigen is something released into the blood, and uh, elevations can be a tip-off of a problem. 
you can have a problem but have a normal PSA. So beginning to get rectal exams is also appropriate in the, in, in the 40s. And that should probably be done on a yearly basis. It might even begin to make sense to get a testosterone level, which is the male hormone, which is involved with a lot of the reasons that make us men. And if testosterone levels get low, we, we don't have as much strength. We don't build muscle the way that we used to. We don't have the same sexual desire, may have issues with erectile dysfunction. So I have noticed that this process can start in the 40s. The 50s, uh, we're going, going a little bit further into uh, more regular screening involving colonoscopy, for example. And I should say that there has been a change in the screening ages, particularly if you're of African-American descent. We probably need to start colonoscopies by 45. And data is now showing that possibly as a result of the use of cell phones in men's back pockets or side pockets, there is an increase in colorectal cancers in younger and younger people. It had always been at 50, but now we're having to scale earlier uh, to, uh, to be certain. Older men, they're getting physical exams regularly, the blood pressure, the cholesterol, blood sugar, hemoglobin A1C, they're getting EKGs done, perhaps getting ultrasounds or echocardiograms of the heart. And, uh, uh, and this probably should be going on uh, on a regular basis. But perhaps you're going to ask me soon, what is taking so long for our men to, to be on a routine where they're getting checked on a regular basis? Definitely, um, Dr. Lynch, um, that is, you know, some great vital information as, you know, uh, parents sometimes and, you know, as our sons and, you know, spouses that get older, that we don't know when to take them on what, you know, exams and screenings that needs to be done to catch any of, you know, underlying conditions. So that is very important to know the age of when to have these things done. Now, getting to um, pulmonary vascular um, circulation. Can you explain a little bit on that and how does it relate to having healthy heart and lung and what can men do to improve their health in this area? Well, the, the circulation that we have been given is such a key factor. And this blood circulates, this blood has life. And too often we see men that are and women that are still smoking. Now we see our young people are vaping. We're consuming a lot of fast foods, uh, which may have a abundance of unhealthy fats. And these are things that may further clog up our systems. So I'm really believing that if our circulation can be maintained, uh, as well as our lungs, that's going to be a very important uh, factor. Now, we have to avoid outdoor or indoor pollution. Uh, many homes probably are more toxic than the outside. And often we are oblivious to the fact that we are living in, in toxic homes. We need things that will help to purify the air if you can't get proper ventilation. There are certain chemicals that we have in our homes, solvents, uh, certain cleaners, uh, dust that we're exposed to that may compromise our lungs. And so some of us work around toxic substances. Some of us work around mm -hmm. sawdust and paints and, and uh, uh, types of strippers and other industrial chemicals that could damage our lungs. And on top of that, you know, secondhand exposure to smoke. So we want to learn how to breathe. I, I actually believe that many of us have forgotten how to breathe. And of course, life is breath taking. And so even if you've got to get into a martial arts, as I did, to learn Qigong, to learn meditation, uh, to start using air filters in your home and using things like ginkgo, hawthorn berries, omega-3, beets, wonderful because it, it gives your body mm. nitrous oxide. 
And of course, water will also help to uh, protect your, your lungs and your heart. Man, that is uh, some good information um, there, um, Dr. Lynch. You know, and um, as you're speaking of these chemicals that we're breathing in, it's so important that, you know, we wear a mask if we're, you know, going to use those chemicals to clean our house and stuff. And also, if you're not sure to maybe have a company come in and check for those things, you know, a lot of us, we're, you know, we're cleaning the house and we don't cover up our face and we're breathing in the bleach and everything. Or, you know, just maybe, you know, choose cleaning products that are environmental safe out and there just to protect. Mm -hmm. you're, you're so right. I, I, something just jumped in my mind. And that mm -hmm. is that on average, every baby that is born these days have over 250 chemicals that they that they start life with. I'm mm -hmm. talking about babies that were that have not been out of the hospital. They were just born and blood tests have been done and they have found. Uh, large numbers of chemicals that came from mother and mother wow. was just living uh, uh, their, their normal lives. But things like uh, bathroom cleaners and, and bathroom deodorizers and mm -hmm. any number of different chemicals. And, and these chemicals sometimes fall in the category of right. being endocrine disruptors, which mean they may damage and interfere with your, your normal hormones. And so many of our boys may be born now with a decrease in testosterone as a result of exposure that mother had unknowingly. So it is so correct to uh, think that there are people that can come to your home, do a good analysis mm -hmm. and help you to clean up what you may be ignorant of. Yes, you're so right on that. Um, you know, and I, I want to go back to this question here, which is very personal, you know, to me. Um, we did a three-part series um, last month on mental illness, and some of the guests we had on there had shared their story from um, having thoughts to actually attempting, you know, suicide. I mean, this thing is really real, you know, we, we have to take it serious. Now, an ongoing elevated of the rate of mental illness, you know, depression in the United States reportedly persisted in 2021, and it has since even worsened, affecting 32.8% or one in three adults in the United States. Yet, for many men, talking about mental health challenges is a stigma. What can we do about this, Dr. Lynch? Well, certainly we've got to recognize that, that that we've got a problem and and we do have a problem. Of course, it has been highlighted because of COVID, but many of our society um, is suffering. The military has a very, very tremendously high level of suicide, by the way. But when when men start to experience this applies to women as well. Uh, increased pain. They may have the, the, the development of certain illnesses that really may suggest that depression is on the way. Sometimes when men have digestive issues, because when you're stressed out, you don't digest foods well. And so it is so important to have a, a, a balanced, uh, peaceful mindset just to properly digest and absorb the foods that we have. A lot of times there can be a loss of focus. If you or your, your, your husband, your brother, your dad is losing focus, that could also be a sign that something is going wrong. Uh, and, you know, when, you, when you're not processing information like you should, you, you may be, you know, acting like you've got attention deficit. Some of our men also have anger, anger issues. And there, there's a lot of hostility. There's aggressiveness. There's irritability. And that aggressiveness somehow has has been channeled in the wrong directions. I, I, I heard um, our previous speaker talk about how we should not hurt ourselves. And, and, and unfortunately, we take this aggressiveness out on our own brothers and sisters in mm -hmm. uh, too, too often a situation. Uh, substance abuse, sometimes when we see our family members and men in particular 
drinking too much alcohol, smoking too much marijuana, or self-medicating in, in other kinds of ways, they're trying to treat a situation, uh, but perhaps they have not taken the time to talk to a professional. Who is a professional? It could be a minister, it could be a doctor, it could be a coach, but um, we men need other men in our lives to, uh, to walk with us and talk with us about some of the challenges that, that we face. Some men may begin to face sexual dysfunction, and that could be a clue that something is going, going wrong. Usually it could be a decline in sexual function, but it may be an increase, and there could be risk of, of going outside of your, uh, of your monogamous relationship. The suicide is, is a big thing. And for that reason alone, we probably need to assist our loved ones in seeking out some type of professional care because we would hate to know that uh, they would either want to take someone else's life or to take their own life. And it's just, uh, it's just really a challenge. I, I should add this, that a lot of it, or some of some of the the mental issues actually come right out of racism. Some mm -hmm. of our men won't go to see a professional because they may say, "Well, this guy doesn't look like me, and so therefore, mm -hmm. how could he understand what I'm dealing with?" And there are there are uh, men of color, women of color, mm -hmm. that are professionals that we should seek out. But even if you don't, then you just go ahead and talk to whomever you can. Some of our issues in, in men wrap around low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And if there's a lack of love that was experienced at the home, uh, if there is uh, issues, of course, financial issues are, are, are lacking. A lot of times we didn't get proper education. We don't have enough uh, appropriate employment. So we're left with the bipolar, the schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress that could mm. come because of adverse stress in our childhood that has never been addressed. Yes, you know, and um, in the last show, Dr. Max, um, uh, uh, clinical psychologist had um, talked about that. And, you know, for us to, you know, pay attention to some of the signs that we may see with our family and friends that, you know, may have some, you know, mental challenges you know, or wanted to commit suicide and basically call them out. You no, know, do you want to commit suicide? Because right then they got to answer or, you know, and just don't overlook it and, you know, ignore them, but really pay attention because some of these people, you know, they're sitting in silence or they don't feel that they're able to open up and talk to that person, you know, in lieu of being judged or, you know, if they also go see, you know, someone that becomes like a sign of weakness, you know, or is this going to affect me, you know, you know, later on in life, you know, if I apply for a job, you know, in a professional field, but, you know, we have to look beyond that stigma and um, that taboo conversation and really, you know, get help too, so we can get to a place of mental wellness, you know. And, um, you know, the, 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 tr the truth is all, also on that point that all of us have some broken pieces. And there mm -hmm. should be no shame to acknowledge acknowledge that that there that there there are um, people that we can talk to and and I really love the commercial that came before this uh, this this pro this segment started on relationships because mm -hmm. that could be a very strong clue uh, and there should be no shame in trying to enhance our capacity to relate to to one another and and, and not keep things wrapped up tied up on the inside as you're saying yes thank you so much dr lynch um now i want to this is a two-part question to what extent are psychological problems such as depression anxiety we just talked about ptsd post-dramatic stress disorder just to name a few um a problem among men in the modern society and also um to what extent do such a problem relate to the low self-esteem, the toxicity in the relationship among men and their connections with others? Great, uh, great question, great insight. I think that um, 
it's a wonderful thing to see a group of of men. They don't have to all be of the same uh, color or uh, come from the same island, but it is so wonderful for men to get together in a in a kind of a positive way to talk. I visited a church this past weekend, and it was about forty men. And we were blessed to have two two doctors, and we talked about life issues as as men. And uh, uh, it's I think I think there's therapy when we can dialogue and talk about the the problems that we have. And we're we're no different from any other uh, group of people, but we just have to demonstrate the capacity to often choose to be healthy. Uh, we, we have that choice. We have that choice to seek out help. We, we, we are not in the situation of having to solve problems on our own. Now, I just mentioned church. That had been a very popular place for people to go to, uh, to seek out uh, uh, the fellowship of other, of other, of other men. Uh, a barbershop is another place, of course, a gymnasium. But hopefully we're having uh, uh, discussions about uh, about truth and about uh, th the things that really matter. So uh, I want our men to start to take advantage of any health care that they have. Our girls know the importance of getting regular annual pap tests and breast exams, and women are up on getting their, uh, their mammography, et cetera. But our men have, have not been uh, so empowered to feel like I am going to get some information from my healthcare providers. And uh, whether it be someone like the third eye, uh, whether it be an herbalist, there are sources of help. And, and if we would sometimes fall on our knees and ask God to, to lead us to, to who, can be, who can give us some wise counsel, it would be of, of great benefit to not just you, but maybe your children or your grandchildren. Definitely. Um, prayer um, has always helped me. So, you know, um, I do endorse prayer every day to seek wisdom and, you know, just moving forward and, you know, um, whatever it is that we're trying to accomplish, you know, having that faith base is so, so important. Let's take a quick break. And when we return, uh, Coach Dawn talks to uh, Dr. Lynch about dietary nutrition and what has been done to meats in the diet that presents a severe risk of our health. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Hello and welcome. My name is Ronnie Walker. Allow me to introduce you to the Mr. Relationship Man Cave .com website. Listen, gentlemen. Today is not the day to show up halfway for yourself and for the woman you aim to please. Nutrition and mental health are important to fully experience a healthy and exceptional relationship. As a man, we want to make sure we have what is needed to start and finish strong. So go to www.mrrelationshipmancave.com and explore the possibilities. Welcome back. Dr. Lynch, in KUO Magazine's current issue, your article mentions that most of us have consumed too much pork, chicken, and beef over the years. Not knowing how many herbicides, pesticides, and growth hormones are in the meats that we eat, how does this impact men's health? Well, it impacts it in some very basic ways. One of the things that has been uh, accomplished is the study done, it's called the Blue Zones, and I would recommend your listeners to look this up. These were the five different places around the world where people lived the longest. One of the groups lived right here in the United States, and one of the features that they found that identified with long life uh, had to do with diet. And they happened to have been vegans or vegetarians. And suffice to say that that may be a bit extreme for, for many of our guests. We could at least do what Tom Brady does. And he's now playing football at age 44, 45. He has 80% of plant food on his plate with 20% animal 
uh, foods. Now, many of the animal foods, they are rushed to market, so to speak. Uh, animals are given hormones to try to facilitate their growth. And unfortunately, they're using things like growth hormones. Uh, some of these same animals are consuming herbicides uh, and pesticides, which have been linked not only to breast cancer, but to prostate cancer as well. And uh, I just saw a story just within the last 48 hours. It was talking about the low sperm counts among men and shrinking penises, if you, if you please. And these are directly related to these endocrine disrupting chemicals that you would not find necessarily in organic meat. So if you're gonna consume uh, meats, you owe it to yourself to spend a little bit more money to get organic meats, which, which by, by definition should be cleaner. And it should then uh, hopefully uh, provide a little bit more clean nutrition for you. So the consumption of too much animal products can take us down. It can cause uh, uh, more digestive issues. Uh, issues with poor digestion can lead to any number of other problems throughout the body. The digestive system is often the system that I have to work on with, with, with clients uh, to, to try to get them, get them going. So uh, uh, the memo has come out now that if you're looking for longevity, you need to shift to more plant-based approaches. If you don't want to leave the meats alone, at least you have to put, it, put, put them in proper perspective and proper proportion. Yes, proportion is definitely um, huge, and I totally agree with your um, with your uh, analysis of how um, these animals are. The animals that are being used for food are being very mistreated um, in industrial farms. So definitely, organic um, organic sources would, you know benefit the body much better organic meaning that our body knows what to do with that once once mm -hmm. we eat it not to um, mention not to mention that animals will also consume plants and so when we consume the animals we're actually getting secondhand energy and why not just go straight to the source which i it's hard for me to imagine adam and eve hunting down some uh, uh some deer uh or some cow to eat, so I really think that uh, we 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 are now moving in the right direction uh, to go after uh, 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 more and more plants as much as possible. Absolutely, very well said. Um, so, as a, to piggyback on that, um, how are the the bad habits that uh, we're starting our children on as far as um, their diets consisting of pizza, burgers, ice cream, et cetera. What, what effect is that having? Well, you know, it's ironic. I, I sat with uh, some friends today at the uh, Cheesecake Factory. I, I wasn't hungry, but I, but I had a chance to just observe. So there was a 10-year-old boy, and he had, he had a pizza, uh, and he had, uh, had some other uh, foods that we might consider to be kind of more junk food. But as parents, if uh, parents will sometimes give in to the pressure that, that our children have because the other kids have it, mom, why, why can't we have some of that stuff? And, and they may be able to get away with it until, I don't know, until they're in their 20s. But then all of a sudden when the blood pressure, the diabetes, uh, the, uh, uh, the cholesterol, and other issues come up, they realize, hey, wait a minute, maybe mom wasn't leading me in the right pathway. Maybe what she was showing me as an example wasn't the best example. So parents have a tremendous responsibility and it's kind of like a relay race. And hopefully our parents will get us to a point where when we're ready to, to, to hand off, that they didn't leave us in a pitiful situation where now we're, we're, we're 50 to 100 pounds overweight because mom and dad didn't really uh, know what to do. So they let us just do what we wanted to do. And so we, we, let's get some chips, some sodas, and who's got the ice cream? Uh, so I, 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 think, I think we want to have a good start. We come in 
already behind behind you know what i mean so i think uh, a constructive progressive families now have to say what is the best that i can provide for my children what examples can i demonstrate to them even though there's peer pressure and yeah we're going to go to chuck e cheese but we just we're not going to do that as often as the kids want us to do that absolutely um our kids are, are becoming fodder for this um, advertising cycle around the shows that they watch. And then um, also um, there's no such thing as kid food. I think that's a good place for a parent to kind of start thinking um, about what food actually is. Um, in your opinion, Dr. Lynch, I'm sorry, this is a two part question. Uh, when it comes to eating a more nutritional diet, what foods do you recommend for men? And in your opinion, what is the ben what are the benefits of water consumption and how much is recommended on a daily basis? Okay, there's certainly a lot there, but um, I, would, I would remind our audience that nuts, walnuts, uh, could be cashew nuts, are loaded with healthy fats. Avocados, wonderful food that uh, I, I have begun drinking avocado juice uh, uh, and, and it's, it's just fantastic. We ought to discover the virtues of fish uh, which contain these omega-3 oils which are so wonderful for the brain, for the skin. I have people that have allergies that get some improvement because uh, some of the things that I just labeled are actually anti-inflammatory foods. And that would be a great way to approach foods. What are the anti-inflammatory foods? Olive, olive oil, grapeseed oil, coconut oil. There has been controversies over time relative to coconut. Coconut in its most unadulterated form, very healthy. We need our share of vitamin C. So we've got to make sure we got the lemons, we got grapefruits, we got mandarin oranges. And of course, this is mango season. If, you, if some of you don't know this, but down in Merritt Island, there are farms that are filled with um, mangoes just growing, uh, growing wild. So I'm going to go down this week to the mango farms to pick up and get my my share of vitamin C. Vitamin D, even though we've got big time sun here in Florida, you don't go out naked. And so you're blocking a lot of the body surface area. So you're not, many of us are not getting enough vitamin D. We need the D and the C. Uh, there's something called quercetin would be protective against getting things like COVID. The omega-3s, which, which come, uh, uh, there's a DHA and an EPA, zinc, which was already mentioned. One of the fabulous things we all need is turmeric. This is, a, this is curry by another name, but uh, I have been fascinated. You know, I work in an herb shop uh, part-time, and so I get a chance to, to talk to and learn about some, some of the, the natural things that, that we have. Beets. Green foods, make sure you're getting chlorophyll or moringa, but some type of green drink would be absolutely phenomenal to, uh, to, to cleanse your, your, your system periodically. Garlic is another something that is, that is great. And lest I forget, it's also good to do periodic fasts. We can do, we can, we can decide, hey, you know what? Today I'm going to back down on what I eat and to give my system a rest. So intermittent fasting has now come to its own. Water, water, there's no better medicine than good, good clean water. Could be alkaline. I like to use a little lemon in mine, but uh, in terms of, of the simplest thing that we can say that really resonates with our body, after all, we're 70 to 75% water. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's not neglect uh, at least 10 glasses of water a day. Uh, Dr. Lynch, uh, wonderful advice. One of our viewers has a question. Um, let's see. 
Portion and balance is key. However, question for the doctor. I have a friend who can't do vegan because she found out that the products contain gluten. What would you suggest? Okay, well, well certainly <clears throat> there are <clears throat> gluten-free foods, gluten-free restaurants. Gluten, when we talk about gluten, there's, these are certain proteins that, that, that are found. It's often found in uh, barley, rice, oats, uh, as an example, and uh, there are still there are other other excellent plant foods other than those those three. So I I, I think that she can still consume uh, plants, but just having to avoid certain selected ones. Uh, wheat is probably the, the the biggest and the strongest offender of of those gluten categories, but. Uh, we're not saying that, it, that we all have to go vegan. We're simply saying that we could explore things like tofu. We could explore the mixture of different beans together. Uh, certainly uh, turkey, uh, chicken, uh, uh, lamb may, may also be acceptable. By the way, there are those that feel like you can eat based upon your blood type. Look that one up. Uh, we don't have time to go into that, but eat right for your type. Is, is the philosophy that has worked for, for some. Uh, we have another viewer question. Okay, sorry. Um, Mia, could you possibly read that because I- I, I, I can see it. And okay. it's, it's uh, Bon Ami. I guess this could be a, um, a type of a product. It's a chemical free cleanser. And so things like Comet and Ajax and a lot of the things that we, we, we have in our homes that we assume are safe because, well, I got it at Publix, I got it at Costco, and you assume that it's safe, but the chemical industry has tricked us. We don't have time to talk about it, ladies, but lots of the cosmetics uh, uh, fit into a category that could cause you to be drop dead gorgeous. We, we, we you might use, 200 chemicals by the time you leave your homes in the morning. So every chemical in the house needs to be looked at and the best options need to be explored. But thank that, uh, that listener for suggesting that, that there are cleansers and cleaners that, 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 are, that, are, that are healthier for us and, and not necessarily to assume and make other companies rich by buying their often poisonous, toxic, compounds because I'm telling you it's showing up in little little babies and so these little babies start off with a body burden look that up what is a body burden it's the amount of toxins that that we carry it it usually gets into our adipose tissue just like marijuana would would stick in the adipose tissue you might fail your exams uh, some some of you because it, you're, because the certain certain things they hide in the fatty tissue, they become reservoirs, and so uh, we all need to come up on higher ground. We can all make better choices, Dawn. Absolutely, um, it has been reported that because of uh, factory farming um, and the use of pesticides and fertilizers, etc., that the soil um, in this country has been depleted of, of vital trace minerals. Um, therefore, um, we all need to, uh, I mean, well, some more than others uh, would have a need to supplement their diet. For men in particular, what are the most important supplements to include in one's diet to achieve optimal health? Mm -hmm. Great point. If we presume, as I do, that we were created and we were created from the dust, from the dirt. That suggests to me that we, we are made of important and vital minerals. And, and over the years, I used to measure and assess patients for their mineral status. And once the mineral, minerals are depleted, once they have deficiency, their health begins to break down. So we don't eat enough earth foods like cassava or ginger turmeric, but things that come up from the ground uh, would, would at least help, help in that 
in that uh, uh, circumstance. The, the zinc that was mentioned in the last uh, presentation is important as is selenium. Uh, but you know we, we need a full a full array of, of these minerals and their various sources. You you can get them best from plant sources from from, from the earth, but alas, you can also buy them as uh, mineral drops. We have something at the herb shop called Cell Food, and they're trace minerals that that make a tremendous difference. We talked earlier about the vitamin C, the vitamin D, the omega threes, the zinc. Turmeric, beets, green foods, very, very important. There's a list of other supplements that men may particularly find valuable uh, for improving their, uh, uh, their circulation, particularly their reproductive health circulation. And that might include things like L-arginine. Uh, tribulus uh, 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 is, is another item. Uh, there's ginkgo. Uh, biloba, hawthorn berries uh, have also been been added to, to to such a list, to name a few. But uh, some of your list is, listeners may want to contact me for some of the specific uh, items that they feel they they may be lacking. But the more plant foods that we get of organic origin, the better uh, it will be for us, uh, because. Uh, the artificial uh, foods that that come uh, come to us at a at a cheap price uh, will also cheapen our health, and so we we can't use money always as a metric to decide. Well, I can't afford that. Well, are you saying that you're not worth uh, spending a little bit more money for for that? Because the body, the health is very forgiving for a while. I'll tell you, I went to two funerals within the last four weeks. Both women were in their early to mid 60s. Oh. And we we're seeing a lot more young people go to sleep. Uh, perhaps, perhaps it was, it was certainly it was God's, uh, you know, God's plan, but perhaps we could do a better job in the world of prevention and, uh, and, and getting accurate, clean information to help us to make the right decisions. This is so very true, very well said. Uh, one area often neglected when talking about nutrition is nourishment for the spirit. After all, it is the source of life and healing of the in the body. Coach Mia is taking this up with Dr. Lynch after the break. Stay tuned, we'll be back in 60 seconds. I am excited to officially announce that as we speak, Qualey Works is setting up the Qualey Works Empowerment Broadcasting Network. This institution will assist development groups in the U.S. and around the world to set up their own empowerment television channels. Our licenses and software enable these channels to be accessed through Roku, Amazon Fire, Chromecast, or Apple TV, thus ultimately giving us access to potentially 250 million subscribers. As part of that effort, we are launching our own Quaily Works self-empowerment channel in the first quarter of 2022. I hope you are as excited as we are. So stay tuned as the game has indeed changed. And for those who are interested in subscribing to our network, getting involved with this effort as a program producer, becoming an affiliate, or setting up your own independent TV channel, email us at quailyworks at gmail.com. You're not on mute, are you? Oh, sorry, my thing was on mute. 
Um, let me go back. This is um, topic here, spiritual uh, self-care is one of my favorite conversations. Um, Dr. Lynch, in your opinion, what does it mean for spiritually um, healthy in terms of us, you know, connecting to a higher power and those around us? You know, for, first, I, I, I would say that the, the evil one, the, the devil, would often have us to think that we're in this on our own. And I, I'm happy to, to say that we're not. And there is a lot of spiritual food that we should not leave on the table to, to be wasted. T.D. Jakes, as an example, has some very fantastic uh, uplifting uh, presentations that I, I would invite any of our men to listen to. I will take in some Joel Olstein as he has this gift of, of encouragement. I will do Bible studies. And for me specifically, I have a interest in pr prophecy. And so I will study with, with other men, subjects like Daniel and Revelation, which actually talks about the times that we're living in and the newspaper sort of, sort of reads as, as what's going on in the Bible. Get involved with different types of ministries. I myself have a, uh, a nonprofit that is geared to support families that have loved ones that are incarcerated. And it is sometimes going into others pain that you really can connect with the Lord for yourself. So do some volunteering and take some of the attention away from yourself and decide that you want to serve others. And after all, many of us don't even know what our sense of purpose is. And I'm going to tell you what your purpose is right now. Your purpose is clear to serve God and to serve man. And we, we probably need to, to be less tribal. You know, the Grenadians want to get into their area, the Jamaicans over here, the Trinidad is over here. Um, and, and we need to be less tribal and realize that we're, we're one blood, we're one love. Um, and so as we serve one another and as we share uh, uh, with, with forgiveness, the best gift that you can give yourself sometimes is to forgive someone of, of their trespasses. But sometimes and we've got to be careful because even in, in the racial world that we're living in, we're living in a world with, with, with supremacists. You know what type of supremacists I'm talking about. Uh, and so, so it's very easy to, to maintain an attitude of, of distrust and hate. And, and, and this will only hurt you. Uh, uh, so we, we need to free ourselves by trying to, 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 to uh, give each other the benefit of the doubt. So go, go to some religious programming, go to the Bible for yourself, go to a, a Bible study. I think all of those things, in, in, including serving us, others in some volunteer capacity, has the uh, capacity to help us to grow spiritually. Definitely. Um, I totally agree with that, Dr. Lynch. Um, now, ask you this other question. Um, how do our beliefs and values about spirituality relate to self-care and having more clarity in making more healthy everyday lifestyle choices? You know, I did my training at Florida Hospital. And Florida Hospital, as some of you may know, is a, is a Christian institution. And I was able to parlay that as part of of what I did with, with patients. And so I call that the ministry of healing. And they have different monikers that I found very useful. And one of them is called the creation model. And that creation, when you spell it out, the C is for choice, that we have a choice and, and we can take responsibility for, for ourselves. The R has to do with rest. Uh, the E has to do with, with exercise, and there's so many valuable benefits to exercising. The T is trusting, trusting in God, but we need to trust each other. Um, the I is interpersonal. Uh, our, our relationships are so important to our, our well-being. 
The O is for the outlook that we have. Do you have a positive outlook? Do you have a negative outlook? And the mm -hmm. N is for nutrition. And that's mind, body, and, and spirit. If we have a, a sense of, of the divine, we will appreciate that we are only part of, of a living system and we're all connected with life. So what right do we have to be mean or evil or, or homicidal to, to, to life? We are a part of life. So when we kill life, we're killing ourselves to, to, to an extent. So I see a very strong relationship with being healthy. As, as it says in the scripture, I, I wish above all things that you would be that you would that you would prosper in health even as your soul prospers so i think heaven wants us to to be healthy but we he they want us to be healthy in our spirit as well mm -hmm. and uh it's the best demonstration of that is love thy neighbor as you love yourself that says a that says a tremendous amount who is my neighbor mm -hmm. well that you, I'll let you figure that one out. But, but we all probably need to love more, even though some of us have love deficiency. If I had, if I had the opportunity to label some of the diagnostic situations that I have seen, many of us have a love deficiency. We don't love ourselves, and we feel unloved. And we can break out of that by, uh, by talking about it and by being around those people. Who can encourage us and who can take us uh, in 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 higher and better dimensions and directions? That is definitely so true. And you know, as we're talking of you know men's health, you know, going back to um, as parents, you know, teaching our men how to love, because you know, um, just interact with some of the friends that I know that um, and men that I've talked to that they weren't taught to love. The father taught them to be, you know, bold and strong and, you know, don't show your emotions and and stuff. So, you know, we have to encourage men. It's OK to show your emotions. It's OK to cry sometime. You know, it's OK to say I love you. You know, it's OK to to hug. And, you know, it's not a sign of weakness or you being less of a man, but just being able to show, you know, affections back because that can also, you know, hinder a relationship especially when that woman wants that affection and we don't know how to, you know, give it back. We know how to go out of work, pay the bills and stuff, but they're not sure how yeah, to they, love. In terms, they, were, they don't love themselves. There were far too many men in my life as it was in many other uh, men's life where the lesson was get what you can, get, get all that you can in a very mm -hmm. selfish kind of a way. And, it, and the emphasis was not on what, what you can give and what you can give of yourself. And so uh, many of, many of the, the men who are now at the age of having some wisdom, we need you to, to, uh, to step it up, step up to the plate and teach our young men that we don't have to be always trying to take, but what, what can we give? What can we, what can we sacrifice for, uh, for our, our, our families and for our loved ones? Yeah. Well, we're getting close to the end, but I just want to um, share this one more question. Um, what specific steps would you suggest that men can make to enhance their spiritual wellness with self-care? Uh, I, I think that if, if, if we men could take a moment in the mornings as we start our day to take account of the blessings that we have received and to, as it were, ask the creator for uh, the instructions for the day. If, 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 if we would humble ourselves and say, Lord, I, 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 I want to be healthy. I'm asking you to guide me to the right people, uh, to the right foods, to the right situations and to the right mindset where, where where I, I can be on the right pathway. It's a choice that we all have, and we should first and foremost choose that we are going to take responsibility for our own health, not leave that responsibility to 
to anyone else. Yes, we may we may need a coach. We need you, Mia. We need you, <laughs> Jason. We need me. But we all can make a decision that we are going to uh, be healthy uh, by any means necessary, as Malcolm X would say, uh, by any means necessary. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Lynch. And just thank you for being here on the show and sharing all this vital information that, you know, we can help the men in our lives, our sons, our uncles, nephews to stay healthy, you know, and live a healthier lifestyle. Any final takeaway um, that you'd like to share? And also, where can the viewers um, um, connect with you? Well, I'm going to leave a phone number, and that phone number is 321-624-5284. But I have a, um, uh, I have a shop that I work in part-time at the Herb Shop. It's in Longwood, Florida, and it's in the Winn-Dixie Plaza. And if, uh, if your listeners can hear that, They'll know where to find me because I do some health screening. I do energetic testing and I use your voice and your voice contains a huge amount of information that I can deduce what's going on on an emotional level and can offer some solutions. But at least the awareness of what is happening deeper inside. So uh, my my final words is to. Uh, stay on the tra- on the on the track to to be healthy. Uh, health is the harmonious development of our mind, our body, and our spirit. And we all want optimal health. We all want to get to that point, but you can't get there without a knowledge of your Creator and a knowledge that we are here to love one another, love God, and to love ourselves as well. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Lynch. And um, Jason um, had um, sent a message here. He says, if you think holistic health is expensive, then get ready to calculate your sickness. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. indeed. Yeah, it's a lot um, less expensive when we take care of ourselves and get that holistic, you know, natural health. You know, mm-hmm. then adding up the bills from the hospital and all the tests that you have to get done. And yeah, so um, definitely um, living a healthy lifestyle. Um, you can save a lot of money and go on vacation. <laughs> mm-hmm. Enjoy it even more. Now, you know, we shared so much information from holistic, uh, master holistic um, health guru, um, Joe San, and also Dr. Lynch, all his uh, vital information for men's health. And some of it, it might have went over your head, but Dawn is going to break it down and give some final words of wisdom and take away to help explain, you know, for those that might have joined in late um, with the conversation. Dawn, it's all yours. Thank you, Mia. And thank you to Jocelyn and Dr. Lynch as well. It has been, uh, it's been a, an honor and a pleasure to, um, to be able to get your message out to the viewers. Um, with, with June being um, Men's Health Month, it is so important for these types of discussions to continue. And obviously not just within the month of June, but throughout the year, um, men remember that self-love and self-care, it goes a long way towards making you into the man that you want to be so you can be present for your family, for others, um, you know, coworkers, et cetera. there's something that, that I've heard different people saying, and it's something that I've always uh, referred to is from being a child uh, flying back home on, on, the, on planes every summer. We used to constantly hear, put your oxygen mask on yourself first. And why is that? That's because if you're not okay, you're not gonna be able to help anybody else. So, Charity begins at home and then spreads abroad. 
So I want you uh, men out there and anybody else, any women, anybody who's heard this message and you have a man in your life that you're concerned about, um, to um, remember that food is our first um, go-to for, for healing, as uh, both of our guests have, have talked about. Um, the food that, so we're, we were created, um, if you look back at Genesis, we're created on a planet that was already, uh, already contained all the foods that we needed to, um, to nourish our bodies. So food, as far as your leafy greens, as far as your, uh, your organic, um, um, source, organically sourced um, fish and, and animal proteins. Um, and as, um, as Dr. Lynch pointed out, 80-20 is a good rule. 80% of your plate, the um, plants, and then the other 20% can be the, um, the high quality animal protein. Um, food journaling is a great tool that you can use if you're, um, you're, you're new to this lifestyle of natural health and you're looking to um, change your diet to affect some changes in your, in your life. Just start journaling. And, and keeping track of the changes that you're seeing. I promise you will be pleasantly surprised. Um, supplementation, as was mentioned, um, with herbs, vitamins, minerals, find out what your, um, what your blood tests are, are, are showing you that you have either have deficiencies or excess um, in, in these different areas. Um, you know, being strong, and being with able to with being able to withstand pain is actually sometimes a detriment um, as we age. Those um, things that that we haven't taken care of in our youth can creep up and cause um, you know manifest rather in certain diseases. Um, also, we know that uh, men in our community uh, tend to be underserved as far as insurance and um, you know access to to proper health care but there's there are ways there are definitely ways around this um, uh, women and and uh, you know women and children um, who have men in their lives that they love when I say children I'm, I'm talking about you know older kids who um, are computer savvy or adult children, help, your, uh, help the men in your lives to navigate the, the healthcare system. Um, you know, helping them to uh, fill out forms online, helping them to find a doctor, um, and even go as far as to um, decide to help them take them to their doctor's appointment and help them to, you know, especially if there's a language barrier or anything like that, to be able to advocate for them. And um, guys, please know that you are loved. There are so many people who are trying to divide women and men, but know that you are loved. And um, I agree with what Mia was saying as far as um, our men and boys are being taught how to be tough, but it's not balanced out with being taught how to be soft and vulnerable when it's necessary. Don't be ashamed of being sick. Don't be ashamed of uh, being mentally unwell. There is hope. And we're not just looking for you to look well. We want you to actually be well. Thank you so much, Dawn, for um, sharing that well said um, on that. And um, this has been an amazing show. At, you know, just so much vital information um, that was shared from both Jason and um, 
Dr. Lynch as well. I want to remind um, upcoming on the next uh, GLOW show on Tuesday, July 12th, 2022, with a special guest, Dr. Barbara Dawkins, Joan Edgehill, members of the Jamaican American Association of Central Florida. Join the conversation on how we are raising awareness on Jamaican cultural history, things they're doing in the community, um, upcoming events, and so much more. But first, please um, allow me to remind you to um, like and give the thumbs up on um, Instagram, not Instagram, but um, YouTube, and subscribe at official KUO Magazine so you can watch all our current and previous show. I would like to thank my GLOW team, Coach Dawn, and our special guest, Joe Son, and Dr. Ronald Lynch, and you, the viewers, I am Coach Mia coming to you from McCoy, Florida. Thank you all for tuning in and watching. Until next time, stay safe, well, and continue to find your glow within the mind, body, and soul. You've been here since day one.